people of the earth really love what's possible with permaculture and understanding ecological succession. This is an alley crop medicinal garden with fruit trees, berries, and a lot of medicinal plants that is going to be a food forest. It is already. And it's all possible with permaculture design. I'm making a video where I'm explaining the entire process, so stay tuned. Hey people of the earth, dear friends, family, all family. We are all family. Um, I'm going to do a hyperlapse of the expansion of our now medicinal garden that will in time transform into a food forest. So I'm using some permaculture concepts of uh, alley cropping and also some tropic agriculture. The only thing is that I'm not going all in. I'm working with ecological succession. I'm working with using uh, time appropriately. So I, we are growing right now a medicinal garden. We're going to harvest quite a lot out of it. Uh, and I'll show you how I use um, paper, compost, mulch, and wood um, to get this going and build the soil that is going to soak up a lot of water uh, and it's going to support all kinds of different types of species of plants that are going to shed their biomass to produce more compost and more mulch for the food forest that will not need any irrigation and any real intervention from whoever is going to manage it um, hopefully my children at one point and then uh, with the thought that at one point um, you know as we are expanding the food forest all around this uh, land over here uh, <clears throat> at one point this area will have to be disturbed again and be restarted maybe not just from zero but restarted at one point in its ecological um, evolution okay so we're working with time here and it's just so beautiful for me to be here present to be able to do this and imagine uh, first of all how am I going to teach the next generations to um, you know what this is how I started it a video like this is, is important and what they would have to do to manage it um, beyond its uh, you know most productive climax uh, because maybe you have not heard this before maybe you have if you've taken one of my permaculture courses um, all ecosystems are, are, are striving to become a forest and once they go past the peak of most diversity and production that ecosystem is going in decline. And the beautiful part of it is that we can, I mean, it can take a long time and while it's in that decline, it's not so productive. Uh, it's not giving um, a lot to animals and insects and birds and people. And we can intervene in that space, in that space and time, of course, during that time, to uh, make it productive again. So ecological succession is one of my favorite things to um, meditate on, to ponder on, to really look at in time. So here it is. Here's the, the medicinal garden that I'm expanding. I got soil, compost, I got mulch, I got some paper, so no till, no digging. Um, you know, none of that stuff. We're just building on top of that soil just like the forest does. So I'm looking at it right now as, you know, somewhere in the beginning of ecological succession between um, large disturbance, which probably happened here. Whoever came on this land caught a lot of the trees so that they can put a house and they can have a lawn so people can kind of like uh, mingle around and not have so many ticks. Uh, so it's between disturbance, so point zero, to you know somewhere 
uh, quite um, quite a way during the um, um, pioneer plant succession. So it's in the beginning right now. Um, there is some soil that's been built there by the pioneer plants, and also from that disturbance, there was a lot of biomass that uh, has been decaying and <clears throat> and building soil there. Uh, but it is kind of almost going from pioneer plants to the first succession perennial um, or um, herbaceous plants. So it's really beautiful to work with that soil. Anyway, um, if you are not understanding some of these concepts, I highly recommend um, you take a look at what ecological succession is in the context of permaculture. Um, you can do it in so many ways. There's books, there's a lot of videos out there. I'll make more videos. Uh, come take an introduction to permaculture. Um, small course with me or a full course. We have so many beautiful courses coming up on, on this land here that we're developing as an educational facility. So here's the, um, the time lapse. Before the time lapse, I want to show you what I was talking about here. So on the ground here, quite a lot of grass. So we started this already, as you can see, here's a section of the medicinal garden. There's um, lemon balm, yarrow, there's some lavenders hiding in there. There's some calendula, there, uh, there's comfrey right there. Some of the weeds that are kind of like going wild. There's some zinnia also. And then there's some violets and some dandelion and some other kind of like quote unquote weeds that we left there. And then right here, you see how we created this path of mulch on top of that grass that we cut. Here we have berries. We have some blackberries, raspberries, more blackberries, fruit trees, apple trees that just got um, planted this year. This one grew quite a lot. Um, more blueberries. Um, almost the same pattern as here. We repeated this. This doesn't mean that the species are going to be here forever. Um, but they're doing really great with no irrigation, really. Hey, they get rain and then we water by hand sometimes when it's super hot. More apple trees. Then we have some um, elderberry here. That's a, it's native to this space. Uh, there's also a red bud right here. That's a nitrogen fixer. Lots of clover we put into the blueberries. Um, more raspberries here with lots of clover on the ground and some mints that are kind of like creating a natural mulch. And again, repeated pattern that we did clover, calendula, uh, um, well not clover, um, comfrey, yarrow, and lemon balm. And this is because we are managing this as an alley crop uh, to be harvested. So, um, some of these plants are uh, perennials and some of them will survive uh, for the long term. They'll still be inside of this food forest. Others will, um, you know, like one of my uh, newest students told me, uh, will, one of them will, will accept itself into the body of the ecosystem, which I really like that. And as you can see, we do have some weeds that are coming out. So these are pretty persistent weeds here, even though we did put paper and quite a lot of mulch. And that's because of the time of the year that we did it. And that's a little tidbit here. You want to work um, to do this kind of things early in the spring. So you catch, um, you know, all these weeds, uh, all these grasses um, early in their... Um, in their development stages so that uh, they won't make it through the paper. Uh, of course, some of them we do want, like the violets that we have here. Anyway, um, yeah, this is our humanure composting toilet and uh, we did an orchard compost toilet that is going to help with the growth of other fruit trees that we're going to plant in here. 
And of course we have some of these bigger species that are providing shade. Uh, in time, they will also, um, um, also disappear. <laughs> they will accept themselves into the body of the ecosystem. So we can intervene to do that. Uh, there is some oaks also. Um, yeah, there's so much more to speak about this. Uh, there's the compost system there and a mimosa tree. Quite a lot of nitrogen fixers, a lot of wild pollinator attractors and uh, pest deterrents too. So here it is. Perfect timing. The family showing up to help finish. So yesterday, oops, yesterday we added a, a road to this alley crop here that's going to be a food forest. And today we brought the good energy of the children to uh, bless this food forest. So it grows. Uh, big and beautiful and productive. <laughs> 